Oh, any questions? So Mr. Nelson, you don't want to share your response to it. Yeah, he's rebutting before. And they could, if they wanted to do short closing statements, they could do that. That is allowed. You may ask questions of either one, if you have any questions. I do. I have a question for Mr. Ron. Um, how, how, would you, um, how would you explain that Mr. Nelson had a financial interest in voting for another one of the nominees? I don't have to explain it. Once he became a nominee, he acquired a direct private, a private interest as defined in the code. Once he, once he met that statutory definition, my I, I have to explain nothing other than the conduct as it occurred and that it violates the code. I'm not sure uh, I was supposed to ask the question. Well, my, my question is, it, the code says if he has a financial interest. Private interest. And private interest is very exclusively private defined. Interest. A direct financial gain or a direct financial loss. And the only exception being is if the financial gain um, does not accrue to him to any greater extent than others in the group. Correct. One person was getting the financial gain, even though it may be perceived by some people to be a modest amount of money, even if it was just a few dollars, it was a direct financial gain. To whomever, to whoever right. might be appointed. Right. Mr. Roth, I, yes, sir. on that particular point, um, you said that Mr. Nelson had a duty to refrain from voting on any matter in which he had a private interest. But, That's correct, yes. But once he acquired a private interest. 2104020, if we focus on that language, says a public official who has a private interest in any law or policy proposed or okay. pending shall disclose the fact and refrain from voting. Uh, correct. This is a an appointment. It's it's not a law, and it's not a policy. Actually, it's a matter of policy. Uh, it, you you say that in t explain it. Why is this a policy? Would you say we have we voted on a policy tonight? I think uh, the chair, Mr. Fleetwood, said as a matter of policy, we will be appointing. Shall we go to the video take? Well, the. You're interpreting this ordinance and his use of the word in the same way. But is this a law or is this a policy? It's a policy. And what is the policy? The policy is the county council, under current statutory law, is the body that fills vacancies, all vacancies. But they do it through appointment, don't they? Which is the policy, sir. So was he voting on the policy that, that, that the, the, the council would appoint? He was voting on the outcome. So he was voting on the map. Okay. He wasn't performing on a legislative act. They weren't passing an ordinance, but they were acting as a council in a non-legislative capacity, which is policy. And how is it that how is it that you conclude that anything that's a not I'm, I have to go back on that because I just don't and understand well, it. There are things that the council does that are legislative acts. Those right. are done by passing ordinances. But when they do take action that is not done by ordinance, appointments are almost a textbook example. That's a, it's a policy that that they're following. So everything short of passing ordinances yeah. is policy. Everything else they do is policy. Everything they do in council chambers that involves votes is either a law or a policy. That's my statement. He's not supposed to vote on anything he has private interest in when he's in council chambers. That's my statement. Policy and law covers everything they do that is worth voting on and worth recording in the minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions of either party? Um, Mr. Nelson, uh, uh, prior to the voting starting, um, Councilman Fleet would read out a list of seven steps because he felt the process should go through. Remember that? Could you yeah. speak up? I'll try. This is about as good as I get. Do <coughs> um, you remember the seven steps that, that Fleet would propose to go through? No, I through would not be able to call them if I tried. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, Mr. Well, Fleet would not assume they were policy. 
I, I'm not making a comment whether they're policy or law. I just, but there were seven steps and there was a discussion that went on within the council on the seven steps. And uh, Councilman Crawford suggested a friendly amendment which was to amend uh, any section where Councilman Crawford had uh, said that the nomination would be conditional on a person who won four or more votes. I believe you responded to the question of four or more votes in your letter. And then the suggestion was an amendment that it would change to a majority of votes instead of four or more votes. And that amendment was then accepted by the council as a friendly amendment. So as I understood reading the amendment in minutes from uh, Councilman Crawford's proposal that it, it relied on four votes in order to, for a nomination to proceed forward, um, that changed to a majority of votes. So my question is, what was in the minds of the council? Council members. That distinctly is not in my mind because our rules are the, the charter, the law, our uh, law county code does not allow it. So I'm not sure what you're referring to. But, so I, I wouldn't have, if he had made that, and I don't know if he did, I don't recall exactly what he made, uh, but we would, I would certainly not have voted for a minority of the council being majority. Uh, Madam Chairperson, you might provide him with this. Yeah, I, th I think it is from the, from the minutes that we had from the motion passed to go from, but I, I would just say that even if there were six there, Four was still a majority. Four is required. Um, in the, in the your statute, to, in the codes. Mm -hmm. The question I'm trying to get to is, uh -huh. if a member had abstained and there were only five members voting, is that still, is the majority of votes carried by those five it's still four? four? Well, that's my question. Is it four? I think it's six. Is it a simple majority? The law is four. The law is four. So the, death, so the understanding of majority was? I don't think they can change that. No. Okay. I, so I don't even remember that as a discussion point. And I apologize if something's in the minutes pertaining to that, and I don't recall it uh, uh, at all. Also, if, the, um, if it's not more specific than a majority, then that will mean a majority of the full council, not a majority of the people present unless it's specific and says a majority of the people present. I did not read that in the transcript. So. I, I'm just trying to understand what was in the minds of the council. I couldn't tell either. Yeah. <laughs> at the time when they, they, they made the effort to change it from four to a majority. I don't yeah. know. Well, what's, the relevance the to what, what's the relevance to whether or not Mr. Nelson violated the provisions? The relevance is it does, change, it does potentially change the outcome of the voting if he abstained or Upstate. But it doesn't have anything to do with this complaint. That you're, am I correct? I, I, I'm either missing it or. Well, no, because in, in, in Mr. Nelson's response, uh, uh, he said the number needed to take action is four. Consequently, a person would need to receive four affirmative votes by the council in order to be seated. My question rests on. Mr. Nelson had abstained, and the majority then was three, because there were three candidates, or I think three or more candidates, who received three or more votes. If it was a simple majority based on five, would that have meant that those three had a majority? And how does that bear on the issue of whether or not he was entitled to vote or not? That's my question. Okay, I, I'm just, uh, it bears on the issue. Oh, my, my question, I'm just trying to understand oh, whether he could have affected okay. the outcome. All right, I'm, I'm thinking down a different path. I'm sorry, Rod. I'm with you. Does an abstention qualify as a person's there, though? I'm sorry, one more time. Well, if someone abstains, but they're still in the room, do they count as someone who's there? I don't, I don't believe that we get to the point of counting who's there, because the rule is that it's it will be the full council, whether seated or not. Um, a majority would be four, and unless an amendment came in that was legally supportable that specifically said it will be a majority of persons present, then it is presumed to be a majority of the full council. And uh, so I, I think either way it, it means a majority of the full council unless it says in there that it's a uh, majority of members seated. So I'm not sure that it'll make any difference, uh, but that's for you guys to decide, not me to 